we love to tell the story of how this <laughs> show came to pass. My dad had told me about his father working in a Beloit, Wisconsin foundry during World War II. And he had uh, this E for Effort pin had been awarded to him for his war service in the foundry. And I was telling Jacinda, I, I've got the story, it's set in World War II, and, and I think it should happen in the foundry, it's about a girl. And she said, actually, if you're wanting to write a show about women in the war, you know, there were, there were shipyards in Sturgeon Bay. And I said, I had no idea there were shipyards in Sturgeon Bay. We started writing the show without ever doing any interviews at all, um, which was a terrible idea, but at the time we felt like it was the right way to, to start things. And people started calling us and saying, you've got to talk to my mother, you've got to talk to my grandma. You gotta, yeah, you've got to talk to my aunt. And, and all of it was just this rich, um, just this treasure of people who wanted to tell their story. You know, no one had ever asked them this story, which was amazing to me. Almost all of the women that we interviewed are gone, and men. You know, we interviewed sailors, we interviewed soldiers, we interviewed people Morse who, code operators. Morse code operators, yeah. yeah. yeah in fact, the Dotty Dot It number in the show, um, we were interviewing a friend of ours' father. He trained radio men during the war, and he said, oh, you know, the best guys were the ones who were the musicians, because Morse code, it's like music. Well, that's a, you'll hear that in the show. Morse code, it's like music. The material that came out of these interviews were Hilarious. There's a part in the show where a woman sends a chicken through the mail to her boyfriend. Well, in real life, this was my, my sister's mother-in-law, this very bright, well-educated woman who, back during the 40s, sent a chicken in the mail to her brother, actually. When they play on stage, people say, how did you come up with that? And I'm like, we didn't no, come up with that. I mean, in fact, there's nothing in the show that is not based in reality. And there is some strange things that happen in the show. We found the shipyard newspapers, and it had this big article about how production um, was up because the women were requiring that the men prove that they were showing up for work. Everybody cared about the war effort. Everybody. Blue Slips is really kind of the first historical referenced play that has a Door County location. 60 years ago, this story was happening in this town, in this community. Ships were being built. This, this Sturgeon Bay was being completely converted to the shipbuilding industry. And the streets were crowded with people. There were sailors everywhere. There were shipyard workers being bussed up from Green Bay and Manitowoc. And the shipyards were that loud and functional and energetic. The Great Lakes was a huge shipbuilding uh, uh, spot. And so that was a huge part of life in Sturgeon Bay. And it was very fun to kind of Again, having now being in the 40s gave me permission to write music of a whole different style. We were lucky, you know, to be working with Jimmy. He had written several successful show, shows already for American Folklore Theater, and he was willing to take a bet. He believed in us, so he's written some really great music for the show. I think James's score for Lucips is a really interesting um, score because it it certainly has some pastiche and you get, an, you get a real flavor of the 40s, but there are also some numbers in it that are very contemporary, that are very modern musical theater. And I think that juxtaposition keeps the piece um, really relevant for today. Pam Krieger choreographed and directed. Pam loves this era, and she's a real hotshot choreographer for the style of music. Tap dancing, swing dancing, that speaks to the music. It was such a great era for music, and likewise dance. That's one of Pam's strengths and she brings it to this play in space. Loose Lips is just the perfect piece for her. All of her strengths she's able to bring to this play. You know, the story is really about the women in the show expanding their world. The men went off to war. The women really came together to do a lot for this country. Women had gone through enough in World War II, they had pulled their own weight and figured it out. And I think Loose Lips really reflects that in spades. We were talking to a woman who had gone back to being basically a housewife after the war ended, and she said, we were not allowed back in the workforce, but we raised our daughters differently. You get a real understanding from that time period about how women's roles changed dramatically, and they could never go back again. I think another message of this show is how much we need each other. I mean, they really needed each other then, and we still need each other. That era was a time when our country, which is really divided now, was not. It was united in one, with one goal, which was to bring those boys home and to get through this together. Whatever it took to do that, whether it meant working, whether it meant sacrificing, whether it meant growing food in your backyard, whether it meant throwing your lunch pail, 
into the recycling bin or getting your pans out of your kitchen and putting them into the for the war effort. Everybody was on the same page. And that's our, our final song. We stuck together through all kinds of weather, made it through thick and thin. Possible, audible.